Hey, I thought in this video we could check out some SQLite GUIs that we can use to edit and manage our tables and data. Now SQLite is just like another database where you can use the shell to type all of your SQL commands. And actually, if you go to the SQLite.org website, you can actually try it live. You can run and use all of the different SQLite commands here to get a feel for how this works. You can also load a database and download that database with any of those changes. But remembering all of those commands can be a little time consuming. But let's take a look at a few GUIs that we can use that make editing our data a little bit nicer and a lot easier. First up is DB Browser for SQLite. Now SQLite has been around for decades and it feels like DB Browser has been around that long as well. It's one of the OGs and it's really nice and intuitive to use. And if you're using Windows, Mac or Linux, you can download a version and it's also available open source on GitHub. So make sure to check that out. And we can see here in the GUI DB Browser for SQLite that it's not just SQL in a terminal, it's actually got some UI for our different tables, rows and icons to illustrate the different types of those rows and their conditions like constraints, indexes, auto increment and fields and much more. Now you can still run SQL to insert data, but you can also use the GUI to create tables, rows, indexes and much, much more. So check this out, it's really cool. It allows you to open databases, save databases, edit and sort and do anything you can, uh, which is really cool. And finally, one thing that I really enjoy using is the ability to export to CSV. So if you need to edit some data and then export it, you can do that and share it with your team, which is very, very helpful. Next up, we have Beekeeper Studio, which isn't just for SQLite, works with a ton of different databases, but a support for SQLite is really awesome. And you get the benefits and features of the full application as if you were using any other database. So it's really cool. You can download this, and then when you download it, you'll get a UI that looks very, very familiar to some of these online tools where you can edit data, and those tools like CMSs. It gives you that kind of home, warm feeling of somewhere that you're familiar with using, and it's not gonna feel as daunting that you're editing database data. So if that's something you're looking for, then definitely check out Beekeeper Studio. It's really, really nice. And the features that I love the most here is SQL's auto-completion. We can type something and if we don't know the table or we can't remember the full length of the table name, we get support from Beekeeper Studio, which is just so time saving. Of course, if you are like me and open a thousand tabs, you're gonna appreciate the feature for tabs as well. But the one feature that I love the most is being able to write a query, save it, and then use it again, again, and again. It's really cool, really nice way to work. And if you're working with something locally and you are copy and paste and SQL scripts, uh, you can put these all into Beekeeper and you can run those at any time now or in the future, which is just really nice and a huge DX improvement. So make sure to check out Beekeeper Studio. Next up is DBeaver and like Beekeeper Studio, this works with a variety of different databases but you'll also notice that it works with SQLite, which is really cool. And we get all of the benefits of DBeaver with the support for SQLite. You can download it, it's open source. The documentation is on their website and you can learn how to get started and see what this looks like, which is really nice. One thing that was added to DBeaver recently was the ability to use AI or ChatGPT to write SQL, which is really helpful. Now, if you're using SQLite and DBeaver, it may have many more features than you actually need to use. And you might want to use something a little bit more lightweight, but if you're someone that uses a variety of different databases on a daily basis, then having everything in the one app is really helpful. Next up, we have Scleme or SQLime or SQL Lime. Uh, this is a really cool online SQL playground similar to the fiddle or the SQLite fiddle that we've seen at the beginning of the video on SQLite.org, this is a very familiar experience where you can edit and manage SQLite in the browser. And while it is mostly the shell in the browser, when you actually load a demo database and you run some queries, we can see visually some of the data. Yeah, this maybe doesn't look as nice as some of the others, but I think this is actually nicer, it's cleaner, it's easier and simpler to use, and of course, it uses AI as well to write some of your SQLs. We can see all of our tables, we can click into those, and we can see the rows and the types 
and whether they are not null, which is really helpful. Also, if I wanna take this SQL and share it with a colleague, I can just click share. That then gives me a URL that I can send to a colleague that they can click on and they can run this exact same SQL, which is really cool. They also have an option where you can log in and you can share privately. You can also open a file or a URL for your database, which is really helpful. Now, just know that if you are want to use something like the AI feature, you'll need to provide your API key. They don't cover the costs there. Finally, the SQL Viewer web app is getting a huge upgrade. If we scroll down, we can see all of the features that this has. It allows us to work with SQL Lite in the browser in a GUI that if you've used something like Airtable, this is going to feel very, very familiar. And it has most of the features that you come to expect from things like Beekeeper and DB Browser for SQL Lite. But coming in the SQL Viewer 2 version, we'll open that alpha in just a second. It has been rewritten from the ground up to have reduced memory usage and improved performance. And some of that reduced performance was because it was using SQLite in the browser in memory. But now the files are copied to the file system, which make things a lot easier and a lot faster and more performant. And as well as that, some of the UI components have been updated, so this looks a lot nicer. So let's open this up and we can see here, there's a new landing page coming for this. And if we launch this and scroll down, we can load some sample data. We can also make this full screen and we can bookmark this and come back to it. But inside of here, we can open a file, we can refresh, we can filter our database and table names here. And then we can also expand this to see all of the different columns and their types. And we have icons to show us what kind of field this would be. Here we can see we have an integer. If we scroll up, we have a varchar here and we've got a row ID column. So this is really cool. And if you need to sort and filter by any data, you can do that, which is really, really helpful. And we can see all of the data here. And if we find one row that we want, we could pin that row. So it's always there when we are searching through our tables. And then we can open that data and we can edit that data in the browser and save it. And once we're done with that, we can open the table info and we can see anything we need to learn about the configuration of our tables in our SQLite database. So this is a very cool online tool that you can use with some significant improvements coming. If you use any one of these, please let me know in the comments which one and why. But if you're using something completely different, I'd love to check it out. So please let me know what you're using there as well. And just before we go, there is one other tool, which is you can use SQLite directly inside of VS Code. And we'll learn about that in another video.